Hello everybody. In today's show, A Dog's Day, we're going to talk about dog psychology. Help us understand a little bit better our furry little friends. We're going to also talk about repetition, consistency, planning, and most of all, patience. But before we get started today, I'd like to give a huge thank you to NewWayEnglish.tv for sponsoring this video. If you're an English language learner, guidance might just be what you need. New Way is a dedicated English communication provider for all levels. Programs for kids, teens, and adults are available online or on-site at our center in Da Nang, Vietnam. New Way English even provides free content on YouTube and all their social media platforms. Seriously, if you don't have the money for fancy-faced language centers, this is the place for you. In the links below are the links to a free demo class, or just check out New Way English. Check it out. Roll the intro. So, with that being said, let's get started. Today, we are going to... Again, as I said, a day, a dog's day. So, we're going to start off with our vocab here, with our new little studio setup. Always trying to change things and improve things. Let's go with the first one here. So, we're going to talk a lot about dogs today. Dogs are another one of my passions. I know popcorn is one of them. And you know how much I love animals. Um, dogs are special to me a bit because I used to train dogs in Canada. I worked with, I trained with a, a an ex-dog master. He was, uh, he used to work for the Vancouver City Police. So I worked with a lot of dogs. I almost went into opening a, a canine school, canine meaning dogs, canines, um, before I went into English centers. So it was a it was a 50-50, but I decided to teach English. So now I get a chance to talk about dogs. And I think we need to, because I think a lot of people really don't understand how to take care of their little furry, fluffy friends. So, the first thing we want to talk about, and we talked about endangered animals before, we have wild animals, and we also have animals that can live with people. So what do we call these furry little fellas that, I know they're dogs, but we're talking about cats, we're talking about the little micro pigs, and we're talking about, uh, I guess, even rabbits and birds. Now, I wouldn't call birds and snakes and turtles at the same in the pet category, which the word we're looking for here. But the ones that can actually communicate to a certain level. Like, I don't think you can train your turtle and I know cats, they might learn a couple of words, but they're pretty independent. They're pretty hard to train. I haven't seen too many people walking their cat with a leash. At least not that the cat was participating in any way. So a, I'm looking for a different word here if anybody has it. It's a word that has come up a few times. Has anybody got it yet? Anybody say hello yet? We have, hello. Just... We have hello from... Uh... Pig pig English for you. Pig pig English Nguyen for you. Uh, Gapi. This Gapi. time I say it right, right? Gapi. Gapi. Yeah. App, yeah. Application. Uh, hello. You have a lot of names, Gappy. Bobby, there's Disco Bobby. Hmm. <laughs> so who's got the answer? This is easy. What do we call cats and dogs? Mainly cats and dogs, I guess. Horses could probably fall into this category. And uh, what other animals would fall into this category? We can actually work with them. I mean, I know dolphins and whales are intelligent, but you, not too many people have dolphins for pets. It starts with a D. All right, let's get it up here. Or over here. Domesticated, all right? Domesticated. We did this word before. 
but it means that these animals can live in harmony, right? They can live in the house, they can live around. Yeah. By the way, you have a hello, Mr. Deke from Matt Vendon. D-E-K-E? -E? Dick. Dick. Dick, yeah, that's my Deckham gaming name. Dick Deckham, which is starting very soon. <laughs> Dick Deckham. D-E-K-E, Dick. Yeah. Dick comes from a hockey term too. To Dick is to trick someone like a cat and mouse game. You go left, he goes right, and you get around him. So Dick is kind of cool, but it's also a boy's name. I like that name. It's pretty good. All right, so back to domesticated. All right. Domesticated, all it really means is that they can live in harmony with you, right? As you can see, the dogs are living in the house, they're playing, they're, they're part of the family, okay? So that's what domesticated means. Um, you might have, I mean, there are lions and bears that have grown up as cubs uh, with owners and trainers that have similar relationships, but there's also every once in a while the tiger and the lion comes out of them and there's no more trainer. So there's still a much more of a wilder, wild sense to them. They're untamed. All right. So domesticated is our first word for our reading today. What do we have next? Okay. So as we're talking about a dog's day now, because it's kind of two parts here. Today we're going to talk about um, a bit about where dogs come from and how they became or domesticated, all right? Because there was a process, of course. They weren't always living with families and men, men and women. Um, there was a stage. There was an evolution. There was a process. Um, and then there's a question as well. I mean, why is it that some are and some aren't? We have wild dogs. We have African wild dogs. Um, they're not quite as docile. Yes. Guppy, wild. It is wild, but I want to know what it is. He, he, he stole my steak. Look at him. He's walking away with my tenderloin. And I don't know what I'm going to eat after class now. I can't believe these guys. They just come we in. We have they a take hello from Lanty. 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 Anti. Okay. Hello, Anti. What kind of what kind of dog is this? Or is it a dog? It's a canine family. There are some really long words for these guys, but uh, these are a couple of pictures of wolves. Okay. Um, but specifically, they are your. Well, I wouldn't know the difference from a North American wolf, a gray wolf, a Eurasian wolf from Mongolia, Northern Russian, Russia and, and Siberia or uh, Europe. Um, I think I'd know it was a wolf. Wolf, I would know that. But which family or what area he comes from, that would be a bit difficult to uh, distinguish, to tell apart, yeah? Distinguish. So. They're wolves, and the word that we were looking for is the Eurasian, the European and Asian wolf, gray wolves, because apparently, according to scientific research and DNA testing with fossils and different things, that all dogs are descendants, right? Descendants, meaning they come from that family, that group, uh, come from these wolves. Uh, yeah, I, I know, it's kind of... Are you sure? When you look at a poodle and you look at a chihuahua, you kind of scratch your head and wonder how in the world did that come from a wolf? Um, but apparently the DNA is 99.9% .9 the same. All right, so that's why we're talking about Eurasian gray wolves. These are, oh, well, okay. if you're the descendant, then they would be the ancestors. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. All right, all right, so we've got a lab. It looks like a Labrador. I don't think it's a Labrador Retriever. A Labrador Retriever has more golden and longer fur. This guy's got shorter fur. 
And then, of course, we've got our wolf up there playing with a stick. Ancestry. So, again, I gave you the word in the last slide, the last vocab picture. So, can you tell me what you call the dogs, or us, from our ancestors? We are the... I gave you the word already, so you might know this one. You should know this one if you're listening. Or you can rewind, maybe, make copy, and check again. What do you call if, if dogs come from wolves? Wolves are the ancestors of all dogs. Then today's dogs are what? What do we call that? What are you to your great, great, great grandparents? What would you be? Alive. That's true. <laughs> what would be alive? Evolution, I just guess. Mm, evolution. Well, looking for the pictures, we had to use the word evolution too because it's kind of in there from ancient times or your ancestry over years and years or millenniums, thousands of years, things change. So evolution is more about how things change over time. Okay, and everything changes over time, little by little. Still wondering about that missing link one, but that's, that's not the topic today. So I'm not looking for that. I gave you the word. We said that the dogs are the of the wolves. What are they? All right, if the wolves are the ancestors, then the dogs are Got it. No? Really? I gave you the word. Queen. Huh? Descendant? Yeah, descendant. Descendants. The dogs are descendants of the wolves. Right? And again, I question some of the, the dog breeds that we have today, but uh, that's what they've got so far. And uh, if you, anybody answers the question of the dog or, there'll be a different little, all right, some interesting information to give there. But, all right, so we're looking at descendant. They are descended from, they have descended from the wolves. All right, so we have descendant. What else do we have? Guppy. Oh, I forgot. Yet, you did. Yes, you did. You did forget. <laughs> descendant. You are the descendant of somebody. <laughs> all right. So again, we have all these dogs. We have Cocker Spaniels. We have German Shepherds. We have Tibetan Tibetan Mastiffs, which are a very, very expensive, I think the most expensive breed on the planet. You have got Rottweilers, Doberman Pinchers, Chihuahuas. <laughs> it's like 350 different kinds. 350 different what? What do we have? 300 and 350 different what? What do we call all these different dogs? What else we got? We got boxers. We have, of course, the Chihuahua. We have Pomerian. Oh, what is West? West? There are so many of them. I can't even think of them all. I don't. I couldn't name them all. I couldn't possibly name them. Many all. kinds of dogs. Saint Can Bernard, the word be species? Or? Yeah, well, dog is a species, but no, the different, the different families, uh, the families, you, I guess. You, you, and Gappy. Starts with a B. Breeds. Yeah, breeds. The breeds of a dog. Breed with one, one E is like to make puppies. But the dog breeds are which family they're in, right? So you have Labrador Retrievers and Golden Retrievers and like I said, German Shepherds and St. Bernards and Huskies. Um, there are a lot, estimated around 350 different types. Breeds, breeds, you got that S on the end of the D here, All right? So you gotta go with your DZ sound again. Breed, that plosive, Dzz, turn it into a Z. Breeds, a lot of breeds, absolutely. But it wasn't always that way. 20,000 years ago, 40,000 years ago, it was a bit different. Next. All right, so this one, yeah. 
it's kind of like, kind of like guessing, kind of like high or low. It was really, it was a very difficult picture to find as well. We had people looking at houses, trying to give you a price on uh, how much it would cost to build or how much it would cost to renovate, to fix up, to make an addition, um, to investigate. The word we're looking for here is in the reading, they're going to give you some numbers of how many dogs and how many cats or how many years ago that they believe something took place or something began, but they don't know exactly how many or when or how many years. So there's a word for that. Guppy. Randomized? Randomized is kind of like when I take those cups and I put the ball underneath and I shake them around and I randomly move them and then you try to pick which one. That's just guessing. This one is about I that the population will be 12 or 12 billion people by the year 2050. Do I know that? No. It's a guess? Yeah. Prediction? Maybe. Um, but I'm giving a number. I'm giving some information. I'm giving a ballpark. So what would that be? Do you, you English for you going estimate? Estimated. Yeah, estimated. To estimate, estimate something, an estimate, uh, or I am estimating that it will be this much, this, the population will be this high at that time. Estimated number that they will give us in some of the information that we will read. To estimate is to give a educated, educated guess to how much you think it is or what it will be based on the information you have at hand, on hand, okay? So, estimated. Uh, the best way to describe it is uh, an educated guess. All right. And if it's not an educated guess, it's just a shot in the dark. It's just a wild guess. All right. So, estimated is the word we were looking for. That's like throwing the dice and you want to get a seven. There's no way you can estimate what you're going to get, right? It's going to be a game of chance. All right, let's see the next one. All right, so one of the things that we're going to go through, and like I said, next week we're going to go through some of the intelligent levels that these canines can have. We're also going to talk about some of the different jobs they can perform and I'm actually going to go through a series of very simple practices that you could uh, implement, try at home with your dog over time to help have a better relationship with your dog um, and train him to at least listen to a few things. It's not that difficult, but there are a few key things that have to happen in order to successfully be able to work with your dogs. Now, I was able to work with my German Shepherds like this uh, and do kinds of tricks like that when I lived back in Canada. But I was working with my dogs every day for hours. It was my job. So that's different than you spending 20 minutes with your dog every day. Different levels. You get what you put into it, right? So just like doing exercise, doing weights, weightlifting. If you want to get buff and you want to get bigger and you want to tone up, you have to go regularly, right? You're going to have to go to the gym every day for a couple of hours consistently for a period of time before you're going to get any results, okay? Getting results. So it's the, it's the most important thing working with animals as well. It's not the most, but it is one of the most important things but it's no different than anything else in life. It's called practice over and over. There's a word for that. What do we call it? Mm -hmm. you know? you do. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> yeah, it does. Practice does make perfect. 
And that's the same kind of results you'll have with your canine. I keep calling dog canine because it sounds cooler. But, uh, and I, small dogs are not canines, so they're a little bit different. English for you, reputation, I think. Yeah, repetition, repetition. to repeat, right? It's about repetition. If you go and you work with your dog every two days or every four days and one day for five minutes and the next day for half an hour and one day for an hour, the dog is not going to remember anything and he's not going to learn anything. All right. It's repetition. You need to have a schedule. You need to work with him a set amount of time every day. Okay. That's how it works. So maybe you think twice about getting a dog and tying it up on a one meter chain and leaving it there for 23 hours a day. Hmm. Right. Mm. Okay. To another topic. Get angry with that one. Repetition. The second thing you have to learn about a dog is that it's a dog. It's not a human being. It doesn't understand. Stop it. Don't do that. Go away. It's a dog. All right. It doesn't understand English. It can understand uh, well, we're going to go into this next week. I'm not sure the exact numbers, but I think some breeds 50 words, maybe some up to 100 words they can learn, single and double syllable words. But you can't have a conversation with a dog. You have to understand. And the way to understand this, and the word I'm looking for will come to you, wah, is that they turn white when they have a black screen. That happens a lot. <laughs> All right. He is black and white though, so it kind of fit in. Um, think about it this way. If you have a five-year-old little brother, 15-year-old sister, and then of course you got your 40-some-year-old mother and father, and then you've got your 60-some-year-old grandmother and grandfather. Are you gonna talk to all these people the same way? Are you gonna deal with all these people the same way? I think not, right? You're gonna deal with grandpa and grandma one way, mom and dad another way, sister one way, and the little four or five year old another way too, because there are different levels in life. Now, it's common knowledge that dogs, a dog year is like seven of our years, okay? So if the dog is one year old, it has the mentality roughly or the age or the energy of a seven year old kid. Okay, this is why they usually only live to like 12 years old. So my point is, when a dog is two years old, roughly in age, he's about 14 years old, if you want to measure it towards humans. But their intelligence, okay, how smart they can be is at best the intelligence of a five or six year old child. So even though the dog is four years old, which means he would be like 28 years old in our age, doesn't act like a 28 year old adult. He's never going to be smarter than a five or six year old. That's about the extent of knowledge that he can learn. So this means you have to deal with that animal at a certain level at all times. So what is that? What is the word? When we're you dealing do. with their, their psyche, their Thinking brain? Thinking, dog's brain. Oh, yeah. So what do you call that when, you, when you, you deal with your sister who's 15 years old and she's a, a teenager going through a whole new world and she thinks it's the end of the world because she didn't get her Facebook likes today. And then you have a five-year-old who looks at Facebook and says, yeah, boring, and they just want to play Roblox. Or even if they play games. Who knows what a five-year-old does? I Not don't know what a five-year-old does. Clever dog. Well, I, uh, psychology. Yeah, it's the psychology, psychology that I'm looking here. Dog psychology. You have to understand what the dog can understand. All right, and I'll give you an example. You have a couple of dogs and you go out for the day, but you've been gone a long time and they tried to hold it. 
and they tried to hold it, but they couldn't anymore. So you come home and there's a puddle on the kitchen floor or something worse. It smells really bad. All right. You walk in there and you're angry. Why didn't the dog hold it? Why didn't he wait? Right? And then you grab the dog and you stick his nose in it or you slap the dog. I hope not, but that's what you do. Most people, that's what they do uh, and worse things. But what do you think the dog thinks now? Again, you have to understand the psychology of a dog. Do you think the dog, this happened two hours ago, do you think he's, he's, do you think the dog thinks he's in trouble or she's in trouble because he used the bathroom in the kitchen? Or maybe the dog now thinks, oh, my owner doesn't like me. He comes home and hits me and sticks my nose into things. Hmm. I don't like you anymore. That's exactly what the dog thinks. The dog doesn't remember what it did two hours ago. It's not a human being. The only way to discipline a dog when they're doing something, a bad behavior or something you don't want, you have to catch them when they're doing it. For example, if a dog is chewing on the side of the table or, or a shoe that you have, and you see him doing it, then you can kind of slide over and maybe give him a slap under the chin. So he doesn't see your hand. Okay, you see him slap him under the chin. Dog doesn't know, what, 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 what happened? All he knows, I was chewing on the shoe and it hurt. Hmm, he thinks twice about chewing on the shoe. All right, little things like that. But we're gonna go into some of those tricks and tips next week. I'm not gonna spend too much time on that now. I'll ruin next week's show. That one's gonna be fun. So is this one. So dog psychology, you gotta understand what the dog is thinking, what the dog is seeing, perceiving, in order to understand how to treat the dog. All right, let's go to the next one here. All right, so the third thing now about having a dog, we already talked about you have to have, you have to, you have to uh, use repetition on how to train your dog. The second thing, of course, is you have to understand what the dog understands, the psychology. And third, and very important, and it's funny though, because it's the same philosophy in life, <laughs> in relationships, in business. What else do you have to have, which is an incredibly good skill, attribute, quality to have? Um, and it'll serve you well everywhere in life, <laughs> in any part of life. And it usually takes years to, to get better at it. It's, I'm still bad at it, but I'm, I'm learning. <laughs> All right, so you can see he's sitting in the car. If you look out the window, he ain't moving. Hmm. Time, time, time. You're really hungry. The restaurant's busy. You're waiting for that pizza. You can smell it. <sighs> okay. B. Kind of like when you have a baby and he's two years old and he doesn't walk anymore. That's it. This baby's not gonna be a walker. I give up. Good. Be patient. Yeah. Patience. Patience. I took that from Tony Robbins, by the way. That's not my quote. But I, I love that one. You know, giving up and being patient, right? Kid can't ride a bicycle. You just say, that's it. This kid's never going to ride a bicycle. He's not a bicycle rider. No, you don't give up. You just keep going and you be patient. Eventually, it will happen. If you repeat it, keep working at it. Patience. To have patience is very important. At work, at school, with your family, with friends, in a relationship. Patience is a very important thing to have. Next. Right, so I think this was the word I said before. Right? When you're training a dog at first, um, you just really want to work on basic, basic little things. You know, sit. Uh, stay, um, 
and usually you can use. There are many ways to train dogs. There's a lot of methods. I'll go over some of those later. Um, some use treats. I never use treats as a reward for a dog doing the right thing. I used uh, uh, love and care, you know, I'd always scratch his ears and, and give him attention um, to show him that I was pleased that what, what their performance and the work that he was doing. I've never used treats. Treats were just something we had around the house anyway that we would play games with and stuff. But the point is here, the woman is using her hand. This could be the the guy, the trainer, could be on the other side of the field um, giving signals. Sometimes you can train with hand signals. The way we train dogs was you had verbal commands to the dogs so they would understand the verbal and each verbal had a hand signal too like you know, down, down was down and don't remember them all now, I'll have to double check. But you could do it both ways. So you didn't have to always talk. You could use either or. Now these dog, this dog looks very well trained. So. Yeah, P, demand, you, you, direct, directed. You said demand last time and it was on the same question, but it wasn't demand. Just like kind of the, the commander tells you. Command is what it is. Yeah. You're a commander. <laughs> commands, right? Yeah. Commands can be verbal commands or they can be signal commands. It's like when you watch those war movies and he's like, as they're going through the forest, you know, mean stop and then you look and all these different commands without making noise. So, same thing when you're training a dog. Commands, you give it commands. Next. All right. Now this is the example of a another very very well trained dog and it takes a lot of time we're going to read about this um, most dogs you really need to wait until they're over six months of age um, and 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 the, the, the saying you can't teach an old dog new tricks is not true it's not true we've had dogs that came into our uh, what you call that our school yeah um, that were, you know, seven, eight years old and they still learnt how to do this and how to take basic commands, uh, basic obedience. Um, but you can't start training the dog until he's at least six years or older, uh, between six, six months, sorry, six months and a year. In that time frame, you can begin working the dog more aggressively and, and learning more this one is one of those examples. Um, you're not going to get your four month old puppy to do this, right? To walk side by side with you, shoulder to knee, and when you stop, he sits. This is repetition, repetition, and the dog needs to be older to be able to perform this kind of stuff. Um, and this one is off leash. That, that not a rope, they call it a leash, it's flat. Usually a good one is usually in leather, even though some are nylon, that hooks on their collar. Um, and you walk with him and he stays by your side. Uh, but when they're well trained, you can take the leash off, like this picture is going right now. Uh, and you can see the dog is just naturally following the master. What do you call that when the dog walks at your side? You turn around, he follows, it knows what to do all the time. What do we, what do we call that? It's walking, but we don't say. Guppy loyal. No, loyal, loyal is about being trustworthy. Or, or, but you're right, dogs are very loyal, loyal, not lawyer, loyal to their owners, absolutely. This one's a tough one. If you don't know about dogs and dog training, then you probably wouldn't know it. Heel. When you give the dog the command heel, the dog usually comes right to your side and sits down. Or if you're walking um, and he's adventuring and sniffing around, heel. And he, sh he should, if he's well-trained, 
come right back in line with you and continue walking. It's called heel. All right, let's go to the next one. Yeah. Now, these are neat little tricks that you'll be able to do with your, with your pet. It's not patience. <laughs> what is it? Guppy said, comrade, maybe for the previous mm. question. What was that, Guppy? Guppy. <laughs> Got me saying it now. Gappy? What did he say? Comrade. Comrade? Comrade. C O M R A D E. Comrade. Comrade. Comrade is like your your partner. No, not your partner. Com comrade could be a friend. Comrade could be soldier that you're with. Um, but I guess if you were to look it up, comrade is probably directly linked to your friends or your associates. My comrades, comrade. And yeah, many people believe, especially Western societies. Um, it's again. This is we talked about industries last week, and the gaming industry being a uh, like over a hundred billion dollars a year in uh, business uh, the gaming industry is over a hundred billion dollars um i'm not sure what it is with uh, the pet industry like pet foods and accessories that you can buy but it's huge in the west uh the ownership of pets for like europe and north america and australia is it's like 50 60 percent have pets or something like this but it's in the billions as well. I mean, it's not like the gaming industry, but the pet industry is in the billions. I can't remember if it was 20 or 40 billion dollars a year, but it's a lot of money. Um, so yes, many people consider their dogs to be their comrades, for sure. Guppy, um, concentrate, Chang, pay attention. That's exactly attention. what it is, but yeah, this is a good hard picture to get, but that's a great guess. That's a great guess. The situation here is you need to, it's kind of like what Facebook does to you because it doesn't do it to me, but it does it to all of you. It makes you pay attention. It makes you focus. All right. So in order to get the animal to do this, you, you really, he really has to be focused on what you're doing or what you're saying and watching, right? Kind of like what you do when you're playing video games and you don't move, you're very, very focused. It's the same thing. Yes. You have lit hello from Matt Halong. Hello, Matt Halong. How's Halong? <laughs> When we, uh, uh, with, uh, with my shepherds, I would be able, they would sit there and I'd show them their little cookie bones and different things. And I could do this and set the bone or the, the cookie on their nose, at the end of their nose. And I could leave the room. I could go to the bedroom. I could come back and he'd still be sitting there looking at the cookie <laughs> and then looking at me and then looking at the cookie and looking at me doing like this. And, uh, he wouldn't eat until I said, okay, or I said, eat it, you know, or whatever the commands were that I used. Uh, and then, yeah, same thing like this. It never hit the ground. It was just gone in seconds. So it requires a very strong attention span. Okay. Attention span. Right. The dog has got to pay attention in order for you to be able to teach it things like this. So again, it's repetition, repetition, but yes, you can do these. These are very simple. I saw one, one guy, he had, what was the dog? I don't even remember what kind of dog he had, but I was so amazed. He would sit there um, and he would say to the dog, what is one plus one? And the dog would bark twice. I was, how is he doing that? And then he said, what's two plus one? And the dog would bark three times. What's two plus three? And the dog would bark five times. And I was like, how, how are you doing this? 
And I, I found out after what he did was he trained the dog to bark every time he went like this. So when he was sitting here like I'm talking to you, his hand was on the side and he was going, what's one plus one? The dog would bark twice. What's one plus two? And that's how he was doing it. He managed to train the dog to bark on his hand signal. So that was really cool. I never managed to get my dog to do that, any of my dogs, but it was really cool. All right, so we have attention span, something I lack very much. Next. Okay, now this is the problem most people have, uh, especially if they don't know how to take care of a dog. Um, now dogs, you know, you come home with your little puppy and he's so cute and adorable and you want to take him everywhere and you want to put little hats on him and you want to show him off everywhere. He's so amazing. And you think your dog is so good because when you let your dog go for a walk and you call him and you clap your hands, he comes running right back to you and you think, oh, I got a really good dog. But then all of a sudden he gets a little older. Five months, six months, seven months old, a year old. And now it don't matter what you say to this dog, if you don't hold him, he's running away and you're not gonna get him back until tomorrow when he's hungry. It's because when they're puppies, they don't leave home very far and they love the attention because you're giving them so much attention. They always come running back to you because they wanna play. But when the dog gets a little bit older, just like a teenager, same thing. He gets a little, he or she get it, I should say. Animals are it, even though most people say he and she with their, with, with their dogs. It gets curious. It never understood what clap your hands and whistle and everything else meant. You see it in the parks all the time and this guy getting angry and yelling at his dog and his dog, huh? I don't know what he's saying. And he's running everywhere and he's sniffing this tree and he's sniffing that tree. Meanwhile, the master, the owner is screaming and hollering and running after him. <laughs> he's crazy. <laughs> and the dog takes off again because the dog has no idea what he's saying. No idea. Good. The dog is curious. He doesn't understand. I think a good trainer makes an excellent dog. A what? A good trainer makes an excellent dog. Well, when I worked, and his name was Doug Morrison, canine training. You can Google him. He trains, well, he was a, he was a uh, police dog master for Vancouver City Police. And when I worked with him, he was training dogs for mine sniffing in uh, Sarajevo. You know, the, the bombs in the ground that they dig and you step on them and kapoof. Um, he was training military dogs then to sniff the um, explosive powders to find the mines so people would stop getting hurt in these war-torn countries. Um, and that's what his motto was. That's what he told me when I first brought three of my dogs, because uh, my house was crazy. I had three dogs and not one would listen to me, so I had to do something. That's when I went to a dog trainer. And that's when I began his training program. And he used to say, I'm not training your dog. I'm training you. And I went, what? Please I'm stop. fine. I understand what you're saying. It's the dog that don't listen. And then he'd say, no, it's because you don't know how to talk to the dog. So I'm going to train you to talk to the dog and understand the dog. And I went, hmm, kind of makes sense. And that's exactly what it was. He showed me how to deal with the dog. Every dog's reaction is the owner's fault. It is not the dog's fault. The dog doesn't know. It's the owner's responsibility. And yes, I said that, and it's true. So the next time the dog does something stupid, <laughs> think about it. So. Um, disobedient dog, or uh, the dog is interested in something else. Yeah, well, again, whose fault is it? It's your fault. That's right. The dog is... What, 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 what is it again here? 
venture off. Yeah, he's gonna run away, he's gonna go sniff, he's gonna go play. Because everything you say is blah 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 That's what the dog understands. Because you haven't trained it. Cannot speak English, I assure you. Alright, so venture off, run away, take off. He's like, does the dog look angry? No, the tail is going, he's having fun, but the owner's like, come here! Ah! Pfft, gone. Going for a run. All right, so let's go. Next one. Remember, dog's acting that way because the owner doesn't know how to take care of his dog. All right, so dog, again, understand the psychology. It wants to know what that is. It wants to sniff that tree. You have to remember, a dog has the, the smelling sense a thousand times stronger than a person. It smells things you'll never even know exist. So when he goes outside or he's running around or he's in a new area, what he's, the world is a completely different place. How they perceive the world, how you perceive the world are completely different worlds. All right. So you'll notice, you watch a dog. What do they do? Everywhere they go, they're sniffing, they're sniffing, they're sniffing this tree, they're sniffing that tire, they're sniffing this car, they're sniffing someone's leg. Mud, search. Well, now search, that's going to be in the next lesson when we talk about the, some of the jobs that dogs can do better than people uh, to show how intelligent they can be. Again, understanding their skills. Dogs can find things a thousand times faster than a human can because of their sense of smell. Right? So yeah, he's running around. But if you look at the puppy up here, you know, he, he's first he's playing with the ball. And nah, I don't, I don't, I don't, jumps over the grass. That, well, that tastes good. No, that don't taste good. And then he's going onto the track and he's playing in the dirt. So what, he doesn't know what he wants to do, but just like a kid, he's very, what? Yeah. Send, I think, a particular. Mm, particular means you're kind of picky, yeah? No, not particular. Think about a kid who's going around outside, looking under here, looking over there, asking this question, doing this, doing that. They are very, Especially the younger the dog, the more this they are. The older they start saying, eh, who cares? And they just sleep. Curiously search. Yeah, curious. Curious is the word I want, right? Puppies and young dogs are very curious. They're going to go sniff this and sniff that and smell that and check this out and bite this and taste that and try to eat this to see if it's any good. They don't know, right? They're learning. So they're curious, just like kids going around and learning different things. They're very curious. So curious. Curious. All right, next. All right, so here now, man, we already did dog training. We already did commands. So, hmm. Okay. All right, I have to check on some of these words because like I said, a lot of these pictures could be interchangeable. You have a trainer and you have a dog and the dog's doing something. So uh, I have to kind of guide you along here to, to talk about this. So you could say he's a dog trainer. He could just be the owner. Um, it could be giving commands. Clearly the guy up in the corner here is giving commands and the dog is hand, uh, sit up and down and using hand signals, practicing, working with this dog, doing repetition so that the dog, and don't forget, the dog loves to work. So if you work with the dog, the dog is just going to get better and better and better. Um, again, very different, but it, it just, this word that I'm looking for here, the vocab is about Training your dog is to make your dog be a way, right? So you say, oh, what a very mm, dog you have, right? 
And we often say that about our kids too, when they listen to us. And if they don't listen to us, then we say they're dis, blah, 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 blah. So what is it when they listen to you or they don't listen to you? Um, of course, parents always want their kids to listen to them. And of course, dog owners go crazy because their dogs never listen to them. Whose fault is it? Be obedient. Yeah, obedience. What I'm saying. I wasn't going to say that in relationships. I could get in trouble for that one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, obedience, right? That's why a lot of them are called obedience training. You're trying to train the dog to listen to the set of commands that you have worked with the dog to to learn, yeah, or to do. All right. So obedience is exactly what it is. An obedient dog. All right. Next. Right, so I talk about decisions, making decisions, and you have to decide on a few things because one of the very important things you have to do if you really want to have a good relationship with your pets and be able to train them in any way is you and the family have got to sit down and discuss some of the house rules, right? Okay, we're going to get a dog. All right, it doesn't matter if it's a small dog or a big dog, but you have to decide. Uh, can the dog lay down in the bed? No, 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 the dog cannot get in the bed. But then all of a sudden, uh, Missy Missy, but I want to sleep with the dog. Uh, and then all of a sudden now you have conflict in the house, right? Because dad's saying, no, I'll kill the dog if he goes in my bed. And then when dad's not around, Missy Missy, come on, come on, come on, and sleeps with the dog. So, and again, poor dog. Because <laughs> who's going to get in trouble? It won't be, well, I don't know what happened, Missy Missy. But the dog, huh? They hate me. <laughs> Matt, so, apartment. It is an apartment, or a house, an apartment. But uh, this specifically right here in the back, here we go. We're going into the living room here, and you've got this beautiful place where you sit down and watch uh, the TV. You've got a nice rug down on the floor over here. Um, I don't imagine the dog would get up on the kitchen counter, but if it was a cat, definitely the cat will go on the kitchen counter. But what are all the things you have in your house? You got a bed, you got lights, you got sofas, you've got uh, rugs, you've got armchairs, you've got dinner tables. Uh, TV, you know, all the things that we use in our house. What do we call that? You, you, furniture. Furniture, exactly. You, there we go, furniture right here. Furniture, just like future, fur, furniture. Um, and I say that because it's a big problem. Some people think it's okay that your dogs and your cats can sleep on the sofa when you're not home. Some people think it's okay that the dog is allowed to sit at the dinner table when you're having dinner. And for example, my dogs are not allowed in the kitchen. My dogs were not allowed to sit on the sofa or lay in my bed. That was it. They knew that the line from the door into the bedroom, they stopped. They never went in my bedroom. They knew that they couldn't sleep on my sofa. And I had German Shepherds too, so they have a lot of fur. So it was a lot of work to clean. Yeah. We have uh, Yuan Hana, also furniture. Furniture, yeah, furniture. These are little things that make a big difference, right? Because you've got to talk to mom and dad, or, or if you're mom and dad, you've got to talk to the kids. And if grandpa and grandma live in the house, oh, it's not their dog, it's our dog. Well, they live in the house. So you need to make sure that you have a little family meeting and discuss what the dog can do, where it can go, what it's allowed to do, what it's not allowed to do. Are we going to make a little bed, a little uh, a, a, a mat maybe, where that's where the dog sleeps? You know, all these things need to be talked about before you get a pet. 
And then if you all sit there and, and say, oh, well, we get the dog just to chain him outside on a one meter chain, well, go watch another live stream. Matt, if your dog breaks some items. <laughs> well, now answer this question. Matt, how old are you? I'm guessing you're 10, 11, 12, right around there somewhere. He said that you're going to have a problem if your dog breaks some items. Well, okay. I mean, if you have a glass vase, you don't put it on the coffee table if you have two big German Shepherds. But my question is this. When you were five or six years old, did you ever break anything? Hmm. Right? It happens. You can't have kids running around the house and you can't have dogs running around the house and expect that something is not going to be broken. So getting angry with your kid and getting angry with the dog because the vase fell over that was sitting on a table 40 centimeters from the ground, it's your own fault. Move it on the shelf. You know, blame yourself. Don't blame the dog and don't blame the kid. Matt said that he's 12 years so. old. <laughs> yeah, 12. But I'm sure you broke some things too. So, it's uh, whoever is responsible for safety in the house, it's their responsibility. Not the five-year-old kid and not the dog. How does the dog know he's happy to see you? And he's, you know how many times my dog would knock over my cup of coffee? I'd sit down with my cup of coffee and the dog would run up, shaking his tail, happy to see me. Hey, how you doing, buddy? How you doing? And his tail would go, -ting, and my coffee would go, splash. And I would be like, God darn it. And here I am scrubbing the rug, angry with the dog, because he spilled the coffee. Whose fault is it? The dog's fault for being happy to see me? Or me for not putting the coffee somewhere else? But I did it a lot. So, again, you're responsible for your own stuff. Next, furniture. Can the dog go on the furniture? Can the dog go here? Exactly, we already talked about it. Not allowed in the bedroom, right? Sometimes it's good if you have doors. That makes things a lot easier. But some rooms you don't have doors, all right? So, no entry with a dog or in some places. Cities do it, right? No pets allowed in certain parks or certain area. Restaurants in the West. I mean, here it's crazy. I remember cowboys coming down into the restaurant one day. <laughs> People are sitting in my restaurant eating breakfast and dogs are sitting on the chair next to them. And I, was just like, <laughs> I couldn't believe my eyes. In the West, you cannot have animals in a restaurant. So, yeah, it's just... You, you got to decide. So, I'm looking for a short little compound noun. There's two words together, yeah. Um, that means not allowed. What do you think that might be? Matt, bro. This place bro is. <coughs> prohibit? To you and the dogs. Huh? Prohibit. Prohibit? Prohibit, yeah, it's prohibited to cross this line or prohibited to go in here. But like I said, this is a, a compound noun, it's two words. And it's very short, we probably won't get it. I don't know if anybody will get this you one. Limit? Yeah, that's what it is, limit what? What limits? It is <coughs> limits. You're not allowed to go in there, no exceptions. Poor dog. Sliding glass doors are evil for dogs. You're sitting outside and the dog sees you and the dog takes off running to come and see you and <laughs> forgot there was a glass. Pick, pick, Rough. off limits. Off limits, that's the word I was looking for. If you see something that says off limits, it means no entry, don't go in there, you're not allowed, yeah. Max window limits. Limits. But you have to put it together. Off limits means you're not allowed to go in there. Off limits. This place is off limits. Off limits. All right. Next. Okay. 
Now this was another very, very hard word to, to find, so we had to try to improvise. And this one was yam. It's kind of like knowing there could be a problem and making sure you don't have the problem. For example, of course, if you're a bear or a wolf going through the forest, and if you know that they have traps like this, you don't want to step in it, right? But unfortunately, some animals don't know that, and they get into a trap, a lot of trouble. But maybe if the animal survived something like this, and the next time he saw it, he'd be like, oh, yeah, no, 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 no. And it goes around, right? So it's kind of like what we're talking about with uh, the pets coming into to the house, right? You have a little discussion before and you agree on where the dog is allowed to go, where it's not allowed to go. Is it allowed on the sofa? It's not allowed on the sofa. Is it allowed in the bedroom? It's not allowed in the bedroom. You do this to problems later and arguments later and misunderstandings later. What is it we're trying to do here? If we're trying to go around to make sure we don't have that problem. Hmm. It's kind of cool now. I have another monitor here and I can actually see what you guys are saying. Yeah, it's getting better, little by little. Step by step. You, you avoid? Avoid, yeah, exactly. You want to avoid conflict, conflicts. You want to avoid having uh, problems over the pet. You want to have, avoid having difficulties. Yeah, avoid, avoid. To stay away, to know better, to be wise. Next. So yeah, this one is about They're going to bring this hyper, little brown, furry, fluffy dog to the house that loves to chew bones and loves to chew shoes and chairs and blankets and sofas and pillows and clothes and candy. And uh, we need to have a little talk, yeah? So what are we going to call that? Right, we want to av avoid. What is it we want to avoid with this new member of the family now? So we have to have a little talk here because we want to make sure everybody understands what the rules are. We don't want to have any problems. So we don't want to have any, oh, I didn't know, Why do I, you never told me that he couldn't sleep in my bedroom. You know, you never told me I, I wasn't allowed to give him your steak. You gave him my what? Exactly, right? Green mistakes. Mistakes. Couple. Yeah, this is a, it's a hard one. You could have got the picture of the office guy sitting there being all <clears throat> trying to figure something out, but we're trying to keep it related to having pets and, and especially dogs. We, we were going to talk about cats and everything else, but we decided there was so much again, we would just stick with dogs this time. The word is confusion, right? And, and confusion really happens with lack of communication, right? Because if you're, if you're thinking this and you believe this, but the other person is thinking that and believing that, and then all of a sudden things are not working and it's like, oh, well, I'm really confused because I thought you saw this and I thought, and I thought, and you thought, well, no, I didn't think that. So <laughs> it causes a lot of confusion. So many families here are more than four or five people. So it's very important to have your little family meetings before you bring pets into the house. You would if you were going to bring a, a, another family member to the house, you know, why wouldn't you do it with a pet? Yo right. Johanna, sorry if I say your name wrong. Johanna. Ch chain, chain like uh, the chain, the thing. The the answer, the answer is chain. C H A I N. 
I train, think maybe trouble. like a train. Train. Tra chain. Yeah, maybe. A chain, 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 chain. I'm not sure what you mean, Johanna. Is it Johanna? H O, or is it right here? Yeah. Johanna, yeah. Johanna Wulandari. Wulandari. Indonesian, maybe? Yeah. Not sure. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by chain. Um, I guess that's an option too. If you all agree that you're going to chain the dog up so that he doesn't harm anything, there's that option too, unfortunately. So please try to write down the answer again and see what we get. I'm not, not sure what you mean by chain. Okay. Confusion. You want to avoid confusion. And that's not just with pets. You want to avoid confusion at school, at home, with your friends, right? So, I mean, communication is just so important. All right, what do we got? After confusion? Right, so now we've got, I'm trying to remember what part of this is in the story. Um, but when someone, when you're trying to talk to someone and someone's not paying any attention to you, I remember the word, but I'm trying to remember in the story what it's about. All right, so what do you call it? He is doing something to her, right? Um, not paying attention, right? Sometimes, especially with handphones these days, they don't bother me, you know, and they're so caught up, their attention is in something else. And clearly his friend or his girlfriend or his wife, this woman is trying to communicate with this guy. And he is doing what? And it's kind of like with, uh, with the handphone too. You know, if, if someone's trying to call you but you just keep turning it off, what are you doing to that person? Quit ignoring. Yeah. You, you ignore poor her. Ignore, yeah. Ignore someone that's calling or ignore someone who's trying to FaceTime you uh, or ignore but, but who knows, maybe she's asked the same question 12 times. Maybe he's annoyed. <laughs> who knows? We never know. They say a picture tells a thousand words, but sometimes it don't tell you nothing. <laughs> All right, so let's go to the next one. Ignore someone is to pay no attention to them, to not listen to them, to not acknowledge that they're actually speaking to you, to ignore. It's kind of rude actually, but sometimes it's needed. All right, all right, so we had domesticated, right? Domesticated means that they can live with people, right? In a human environment. Uh, the Eurasian gray wolves are supposed to be where dogs have descended from, right? According to some reports, I still have a problem with it because I don't know how a chihuahua and a poodle uh, came from gray wolves, but I'm not a scientist, so that's 99.9% .9 DNA match. Okay, so apparently they all come from the wolves, all dogs today are descendants of wolves, descendant, uh, and then what do we got, breeds, breeds are the different, I don't want to say families of dogs because they're actually all in the same family. So breed is more like a type, a kind, breeds of dogs. Um, an estimate, give me an estimate. How much is it going to cost to fix this computer, right? Oh, but he estimated that it would cost X amount of dollars. Or now I'm estimating that we're gonna have to spend more money. Estimate is to educated guess. Next. All right, so we got a cool dog doing tricks there. But again, dog trainers, a good dog trainer. I've met a few. Um, usually say the same thing. It's the master, it's the owner that needs to be trained properly. Although there are some trainers, of course, there are different methods. Some trainers will actually take your dog, train the dog, 
and then bring the dog back to you and then train you how to, to use the command. So that there are different ways to do it. Nothing that I said here today is the only way. That's never that way. There, there are many different ways to train. You have a question? Mm-hmm. Can I estimate my salary this month? Can I say that? Estimate the salary? Can I time. estimate the salary? Well, no, I don't think you can because you are either getting paid X amount of money per hour or you are getting paid X amount for a salary. So you know how much money that is. You can estimate how much you're going to save and how much you're going to spend but you can't estimate what you know is coming. I get paid $100 this week. That's not an estimate, it's a fact. Right? But I estimate I'll have $2 left at the end of the week because I got a lot of bills to pay. And I want to go meet my friends. And I want that new shirt. And I want that video game. And yeah, I estimate I'll be short money. Estimate is educated guess. All right, so what do we got here? We got, again, trainers and, you know, there's all kinds of different methods, as I said. Uh, again, these are my opinions. I've said this before, not the opinions of New Way and not the opinions of its staff or its team or any other trainer or anybody else. Um, so when I say that repetition, psychology, dog psychology and patience are three of the most important things I say that on my behalf of my experience dealing with canines dogs. All right, now another trainer, another person could have completely different versions, completely different ideas. Doesn't mean he's wrong, doesn't mean he's right. That's his version, this is my version. All right, just to make that clear. Uh, so again, repetition is huge. The psycho understanding the dog, the dog psychology, huge. And a lot of patience, huge, because nothing comes fast. Uh, and then we've got uh, commands. That's when we give them words that they learn. There are seven main words which are in the reading. There are the um, basic ones. I will go through there, sit, sit down, come, go, and all that kind of stuff. It's coming up here soon and we'll read it there. Uh, those are the commands which I'll go through. And heal. Heel usually means, usually, means for the dog to come at your side. And when you're walking, he stays with you. The dog is healing or heel, sit by your side. Next. All right, so attention span, just like when you're trying to do your homework and you got Facebook. Facebook gets your attention, not your homework. In most cases, all right? It's how long you can focus on the span, span of time. So what is your attention span? They say now, who was it? Lopez, Ty Lopez, his name? That the, that the attention span of the average person is like four seconds, and then you lose your attention and you wanna, you, you, you wanna change the channel or you wanna go to the next picture. And the attention span of a goldfish is five seconds. So that humans are now actually losing against goldfish. Not my words. Those were Ty Lopez's words. I don't know. <laughs> but I believe it. All right. So back to attention span. Span is the span, the, the distance, the width, the time. Venture off to go off, to go on a journey, to go on an adventure. Venture off, off somewhere. Uh, curious, you know, wanting to learn, wanting to know new things, asking questions, questions, questions. Um, and of course we've got uh, obedience. Yeah, obedience, right? And that's, obedience can be a negative word too. It just depends on, on how you're using it and in what context you're using it, right? It, 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 you don't really want to use obedience for, towards people to people or something like that. But with children, it can be taken different ways. An obedient kid is someone who 
listens to the rules or something like that, or they might say he's disobedient, but on the other end, you still want them to think for themselves too and not just be a robot. So it's kind of, um, it's really for animals, I think, in, in my opinion, because if you understand again that they don't get much smarter than a five-year-old or something like that, and you can call them obedience and you want obedience from them because you're trying to teach them a certain set of rules and certain commands. So that's where you kind of, but be careful using that word. It can be offensive or offending to some people. Um, decide, right, to make a decision. We're gonna go left, we're gonna go right, we're gonna go up, we're gonna go down, we're gonna go this way, we're gonna go that way. To decide, to make a decision, decide. And furniture, just like fur on a dog or a cat. Furniture, okay. Those are all the things in your house. You have, thank you so much from Johanna. Maybe she's that is finished or something, or leaving. <laughs> oh, well, if you're leaving, goodbye. I hope you come back. But uh, we still have our reading left, which maybe another 15 minutes, I think, and then we'll be finished. But we're not finished yet. Next. Off limits, and that tss is a hard one. Um, um, you have to get to the T, block that T, don't say the T, and turn it into an S. Limit, limit, it, it has reached its limits. Avoid to go around or to, uh, to make sure you don't get into an argument to avoid something. Confusion, to avoid confusion by giving the proper information, uh, proper communication. Ignore, talk to the hand. And uh, yeah, the last two were related to the first two questions. Permafrost means ground that is frozen and has been frozen for a very long time. Clone is to duplicate something. Um, I don't know if you can clone mechanical devices. I think it's just for living tissue, I believe. Clone animals, clone people, clone organs, body parts. I think it's all, I think it's only about living tissue that you can clone it through DNA. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed the show. As always, invest in yourself. See you later.